assignment. He did. Hey guys, welcome to another live at three at the Partzilla studio. And you don't have to guess what I've been working on, that big behemoth behind me. But guess who is in the who's in the house? Uh, uh, Tracy. You know what happens when she comes in the house? She tries to kill me working on a unit, which she just about did on that one. If anybody ever has to do their clutch on a gold wing, I'm going to tell you in advance, I'm sorry. Go ahead and take pain med medications before you even start because uh, it's going to be a long day. Then, But if you need help doing that in how many weeks, Tracy? Uh, about three weeks. About three weeks. We'll get that one live. So. If you're needing to change out the clutch in your gold wing, in other words, you've been abusing your clutch because these things are pretty much bulletproof. But if it does need to be replaced because somebody else did it, you know, we'll be glad to walk you through that. All right, to business. Let's see what announcements. You know what I'm going to announce. We have, and any questions I may have missed last weekend or last week. <clears throat> All right. As we've done for the previous 10 or 12 weeks, we are holding a new giveaway every week of the Monster Energy AMA Supercross Series. But now, but now we're in the grand prize entry period until June 7th. What is that grand prize, you ask? That is $2,000 of store credit at partzilla.com. It means you can get whatever you want. So if you're not a motocross enthusiast and you really weren't interested in some of the things that we gave away, all they absolutely great this is your opportunity to get exactly what you want so head over to www.partzilla.com forward slash lp forward slash prmx and enter to win there is no cost to do so all right let's see what questions i may have missed last week mike baker had asked me hey john i have a 2013 yamaha grizzly 700 it shuts off while idling. Any suggestions? What's going on with it? I enjoy watching your videos. Well, Mike, thanks for watching. Hopefully you're watching right now because here's what I think is going on. More than likely, because that is, of course, a fuel-injected machine, it is your throttle position um, sensor on there because it more or less is telling the ECU, hey, your throttle is at this value or whatever that might be. So I'm betting it may be an issue with that, maybe a connection, could be the wiring. But I'm pretty sure we did a, a test on setting one up on our Grizzly 700. So if my minions down in Florida can pull up that video and drop it in the chat, maybe you can swing around and take a look at it. All kind of noise going on behind me. <laughs> That's all right. She's trying to get out of here so she can head north to either A, see her dog or be her husband. I'm not sure which one's going to win that battle. <laughs> it's close. It's close. She loves them both equally. Although if she had to make a Sophie's choice, I don't know, Chris, you could be in trouble. <laughs> All right. William D Dieterich had asked me, I have a 1981 Suzuki. It runs good. It starts when it's cold. But when it gets hot, it shuts off and won't start for a couple of hours. What's wrong? Starter works, but it just won't start. It cranks over, but won't fire. That sounds a lot like a um, ignition coil to me, because typically when they would overheat, they short out internally, and then there goes your fire. Let them cool down, and they'll work for a little while. So I would aim toward the coil. Let's see if we've got any questions starting to... Yes, we do. Man, y'all on fire today. Let's see what all we've got. Ju Jim Jim Chili. Y'all hey, come up with some stuff I just can't pronounce. I mean, it's like you worked in the medical field or something. He has a 2001 Honda Shadow Spirit 750. Do I need to pull the engine from the frame to for a top-end rebuild? I know it's really close on the, on the front, but on the back cylinder, I think that's the one that causes an issue because of the back moon coming over it. And I'm pretty sure you do have to pull that one. The shoot, the last Honda V twin I did, I think it was uh, like an 1800. And we, instead of pulling it all the way out of the frame, we just disconnected the bolts and tilted it in the frame, but still left all the, uh, the drivetrain, believe it or not, and the electronics hooked up to it. Um, can you pull that one off on yours? Yeah, maybe. Is it worth cutting that little bit of corner? Probably not. 
but if memory serves, you are going to have to pull it out to, uh, especially do that rear cylinder. Frederick Moses. Hi, I've got an 08 YFZ450. I bought a ported head and a stage one hot cam. I want it to be as reliable as possible. Would the stock piston be the best or other? You're not taking it too far. So the stock piston can certainly deal with it. If you were going to do an upgrade, I would suggest going with a forged piston from Weissco. Um, are they that much better than the, the, the stock or the OEM? Well, a little bit. If I'm in there for my money, I, I think you get better value out of the Weissco. And you know that I am a, a OEM guy. But when it comes to those uh, forged pistons from Weissco, they're just a little bit of cut above and the cost is not that much different from an OEM. So go take a peek at Weissco and then we'll get one sent out to you. Rick is asking me a 2022 Honda 300L. 2022, that's too new for me, man. <laughs> Riley says in the manual it needs 10W30, but the dealers are using 10W40. Will this be bad in the long run if Honda say using a lighter weight, lighter weight or oil? Honestly, between those two weights, there isn't a whole lot of difference. And so I wouldn't be afraid to uh, go with one viscosity to the other. The only time that I typically will change viscosity away from the OEM is if I'm either A in a warmer or B in a much colder climate because it's just a little bit of thickness, but that can make the difference on startup, particularly when it's really cold outside and it takes longer to bring it up to temp. But as far as uh, swapping a 30 to a 10, I mean, to a 40, I don't think that will be a problem at all. Jim McQueen, he has an 07 CBR 600 RR. I'm struggling to get the proper ergonomics on the brake lever. I can't get it to rotate, rotate down far enough so that I'm not reaching for it. I've installed an aftermarket adjustable. Well, Joe, that's the first time I've heard of that one. Um, just an off-handed question. What type of footwear are you wearing? And I, I would maybe think about adjusting my foot and what it is and what it is operating versus trying to adjust the uh, the brake pedal itself. Just a thought. But could you give me a little bit more detail as to why you're having a hard time, how you're having a hard time operating it? Get back to me. Oh, you did continue a little bit. Lever and steel braided brake lines, but there's so much junk bearings that gets in the way. I understand. Any suggestions? Bike is lowered in the rear and ports raised 15 millimeters. Huh. Okay. So, oh, you dropped it down 15 millimeters. Gotcha. Once again, I would probably uh, tell me what kind of what kind of riding gear you're using, and uh, we'll go from there. Paul Gravinsky, well, hello, John. Long time, well, only a few weeks, so I've been very busy since then. Today, I'm working on, on an old Craftsman tractor for a gentleman that has cancer. Hmm. Treatments are not cheap. No, they are not. And uh, unfortunately, I have uh, at least secondhand knowledge of uh, going watching someone deal with uh, cancer. Not a lot of fun. So. Kudos to you for t taking that project on. I didn't realize Craftsman never made a tractor. Are you just talking about a riding lawnmower? But um, if you need any help with it, let me know. Craig White. Hey, John. Where, what can I do to get my rear brakes functioning properly? I changed the pads on them, and they barely work now. Why Z450? Huh. Well, a couple of more questions for you. What brakes did you go back with? Second, did you make sure you cleaned the rotor um, before you put the new ones on? And third, have you uh, have you actually burned them in or burnished them in? Um, speaking from track car experience, when I put a new set of brake pads on the, on the car, it won't stop for anything because the pads actually have to, well, yeah, the pads actually have to leave material on the brake rotor before they really start to work like they're supposed to. And you burnish them in by actually getting them a little too hot um, with the car, or in my example. I'll run it up to well, safe street legal speeds and then brake hard over and over again for about three or four times until you can actually smell them and you actually see a little bit of smoke starting to come up because you're burning them in. At that point, get off the brakes and drive it around or 
ride it around until it cools down on its own. Because if you hit it again, especially when you're coming to a stop, it'll it'll clamp down on really hot rotors and make a little high spot. And then you'll get a kind of a, a, a everybody thinks it's a warped rotor, but it's not. It's just uh, from build up from the brake pads. So my bet is they need to be broken in hard before they start uh, clamping down. Just make sure those rotors are clean before you do so. Paul, some of these companies just want to take advantage of senior citizens, companies and people in general. Sometimes a, a weep for humanity. Uh, <clears throat> what else? Oh, uh, Paul's chiming in on Craig. Did you change your brake fluid and flush the cylinder? Good point. Sorry, John, had to chime in. No, that is fine. Hey, more knowledge is better. <laughs> so, yeah, bring it on. Oh, uh, Joe said handbrake, not foot brake. Okay. Well, there are a couple of different companies that I know of that have different um, contours for their, their brake and the well. Most of the time you see it on the clutch side, but on the brake side, oh, is it IRC or oh, that's a tire manufacturer? There's that gum. There's one that we use. Maybe it's ARC. Well, yeah. What's the one we used on the Grom? What what uh, clutch and brake levers did I use on those? They were really nice. Give us, give me a minute, and uh, Tracy's going to look it up. I can't remember everything. We'll go on to the next question though. Joe, 2007 Grizzly 700. Man, we're having a run on Grizzlies lately. Starting issues starts for a few seconds and cuts out. Left over the winter when I tried yesterday, ran for a few minutes before dying. Fuel pump issues, maybe. Chances are when you leave a machine that's been sitting for a while, especially with the fuel quality being what it is in some parts of the country, it'll just turn into maple syrup in there and, and just gum up the whole works. Now on the inside, of course, is your, yours is a fuel injection, so it's kind of a fuel pump. Um, before you go running out to replace it, go ahead and pull it and look at the filter on the bottom of it. Make sure that is not clogging it up because, ah, Hank said, RC2 shorty levers. I knew it had a, he beat you to it. <laughs> Hank, quick draw. So, Joe, if you would uh, check out the RC line, RC2 line, um, whichever manufacturer that is, see if they've got anything for your CBR. But back to the fuel fuel issue, it probably is fuel issue, but it's probably not the pump. It's going to probably be the uh, the fuel filter or the filter on the bottom of the pump. And I believe that's available, available separately um, to see if I'm correct. Why don't you go to Partzilla and take a look at the exploded diagrams and see if they offer it as a uh, separate piece on the fuel fuel tank and the fuel system. Jim McQueen, I think a picture might work better. Probably. <laughs> Dead Llama, that's interesting. <laughs> hey there, I've got a 2000 Honda Fortrax 350 ES with 53,000 kilometers on the top end. Blew up about a week ago. I rebuilt it and tuned the car and reset the valves. It still won't run. Only on choke. Huh. Well, it sounds like you got the mechanical part right, but it sounds like the... Uh, the fuel system may be having an issue. How long did the uh, the carburetor sit up? And was it taken off the machine? I'm sure that it was since you went into the top end. And if so, is it possible that um, your flip bowl may be hanging up or not doing what it's supposed to do? So I would say aim toward looking at the float bowl or the, uh, the float itself and see if we've got an issue in there. Oh, we do? Uh, hey, we do have a video. Motorcycle only runs on choke video, and I would imagine Tracy's going to drop that in the chat. Joe McQueen, I'm not in two 150 plus to get a shop to look at. I can uh, e-transfer you a case of beer if you look at a picture of my lever. Hey, if you would um, send it to, um, oh, what's the best way, Hank, for him to get a picture to me? Um, Hank, one of uh, our guys down in Florida, he'll, he will get in touch with you and uh, see if he can get that picture over to me and I can take a peek at it. How's that? Hank, attack. Paul, yeah, long tractor, John. One issue was the motor stop mid-flight. Oops. Can you guess what it could be? Okay, I'll tell you. Remember those dirt divers clogged fuel cap. 
<laughs> there you go. <laughs> wow, did I catch up with y'all already? 315? You're not going to let me leave early again, are you? Tell you? We'll flip over and see if there's any other questions I missed last week. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I almost wonder if this was set up. David has had asked me last week, John, can you replace the clutch on a GL1800 with the engine in place or do you need to remove it? You can do it in place. And uh, in about three weeks, I'll, we will have a video that will walk you through it. I can just tell you, be prepared to be patient. Don't get in a hurry. It is really tight doing all of this, but no, you do not have to pull the engine to pull it off to, uh, to swap it out. We just finished that one up, what, 45 minutes ago? Well, I've still got to put the exhaust on it, but, you know, that's a trivial thing, right? <laughs> Oh, let's see. Sage is salty. It asked me, I have a 2018 Grom. The bike does not want to start. I rode it and the bike stalled out and the neutral light is dim. Hmm. Put it in first gear. Bike goes five miles an hour. Replace the clutch. Replace the battery. Don't know the issue. Wow. What a weird set of circumstances. Did you have the bike? Well, you can't answer me right now because this is from last week. I mean, you, you went after the two things I would have done, not the clutch, but I would have gone after the battery. Um, my next question would be, what is the charging system doing? Um, that would be where I would go next. So Sage, if you would, if, if you're watching this now, send us another question in the chat and, uh, Let's take a look, see what your charging output should be. Because it sounds like it's going to be electrical, so I'm not sure why you replaced the clutch. But you already did the, uh, the battery. But let's look at the charging system next and see what we can find. Jezzery Tattoos had asked me, what if the battery is charging, but the yellow cables that come out of the state are, are getting hot? Ooh, is that normal? Hot or well, warm versus hot. Should they get a little warm? Yes, because they're having to work. Now, if they're getting hot to the touch, then we've got an issue. Either A, there's too much of a load on the on whatever machine you're working with here. Maybe you've got an extra set of light. If we're talking about a UTV, you've got an extra set of lights, sound system. Who knows? But uh, they should be get, they can get a little warm, but they should not be getting hot to the point you can't just sit there and hold them in your hands. If that's the case, then you probably got an issue. And I would bet um, it's either too much of a load or your regulator rectifier is starting to go out. And you may want to go ahead and replace that first because staters are always more expensive than reg regulator rectifiers. And that caught up for last week. So cool. Um, What's that? We have, we still have that quick list. I guess we could tell people to wrap up again. Oh, I will at the very end. <laughs> <laughs> There's a couple more questions. Joe came back. Thanks. I was thinking possibility filter. So I'll give that a try first. Very good. Brandon has asked me Honda Talon R versus Polaris Razor pros and cons on each. Oh, you're going to try to drag me into that? <laughs> Each one is a substantial machine. They're, I mean, they're, they're both really good. I guess it depends on how you're going to use it. The uh, Polaris Razor, and they've been around forever, and they've got a flavor for just about any part of uh, the country that you're going to ride in, whether it be woods or out in the dunes. The, the Honda Talon, this, well, quote, quote, a new kid on the block. It's been around, what, three years now? I haven't spent a lot of time with it. It Honda's approach is it does everything well, but not fabulous. Whereas the, the Polaris Razors, they can take each development, whether it be woods or sand or water or mud, and they've got a unit specifically to excel in that particular arena. My money, um, I'd probably go with the Honda because I ride in a, a, a wide variety of uh, environments and always uh, always like their, their build quality. And, well, not knocking the players, 
I just uh, have had a little bit better luck with the Honda. Just my two cents worth. Sounds like you're uh, <laughs> it sounds like you're agree agreeing with me. All right, guys. If I've caught up with you, which I have, I think we're going to wrap it up here. But now that everybody or we've got some people assembled, I want to tell you one more time that a, that Monster AMA Supercross giveaway that we've been doing for the last three months. Well, we're in the final giveaway prize stage right now, and that is a two thousand dollar wide open store credit at Partzilla.com. So, I mean, if you you've been sitting on the sidelines because you didn't need a uh, a really high-end motocross helmet well now's the time to go ahead and enter to win because you can spend it on whatever you want to and i believe that's going to be going on until june 9th or something like that so plenty of time to go ahead and enter to win and like i said before it does not cost you anything to do so well listen i appreciate everybody coming by spending a little time with us and especially if you're Shopping with us at partzilla.com. It makes all of this possible, keeps me employed and Tracy. And we really enjoy what we do because it is a whole lot of fun, you know, passing on a little bit of knowledge and helping y'all out when we can. Well, listen, everybody have a great weekend, a great week. And God willing, we will do this again at three next week. Although I will not be in the studio, I will actually be out getting ready to play. So I'll be, uh, hopefully at a racetrack up in South Carolina, but I will just do the, uh, the live Q and a from there. So what the heck once again, thanks everybody. And we will see you next week. Y'all have a great day.